Hey everybody, welcome into the latest episode of the Westwood Living Podcast. Tom Lydon with you, and we are joining you today from Cadillac of Norwood with Mike Exeda. How are you, my friend? Excellent, Tom. How are you today? Uh, great. Thank you very much. And a lot to talk about with you, personal and otherwise, because of my own experience with my Cadillac, which we'll get into. But what I really enjoy about these is just getting to know the people who I've done some business with a little bit more. So as people get to know your dealership, and everything that's associated with it. How long have you been here to start, first of all? So I've been here, Tom, God, it's got to be 25 years plus. This specific location? This specific location. Did leave for a couple of years to go to Florida to become a dealer. But this location, 25 years minus those couple of years and a couple other years, I was a general manager up at Olson Cadillac up on uh, the North Shore. But pretty much here. 20 out of the last 25 years. Okay, so you just said general manager, which is a title I'm familiar with. But uh -huh. your title here is um, a title I'm not familiar with because dealer principal, what is that? Dealer principal is uh, owner, um, obviously. Something listed in a certain paragraph with General Motors that you know shows that you're the owner. So you could still have a general manager. I do both here. So I serve as the general manager, dealer principal, and owner, and uh, have a partner on the ownership side, Michael Ajuros. 25 years in one place Yep. in an industry that has changed so dramatically oh, over that quarter century. Yeah, crazy. How do you possibly put into perspective how things have evolved and what you've learned over that time period? Ooh, tough, tough, tough question, Tom. Tough question. But um, obviously the internet has changed our business dramatically. In general, if you went back 20 years ago, um, car dealerships were probably a place people didn't want to go to because we were always the bad guys. But things have evolved in a way that everything's pretty transparent in a car dealership. You know, you buy a car, it's a certain price. You come in for service, it's a certain price. Whereas before, things were marked up a lot more. Everything was uh, different, just different. It's really tough to put a finger on it. But a car dealership can now be a nice place to come to compared to what it was 20 years ago is the best uh, synopsis I can give you on that. Well, you gave the key word there to me being transparency. Yep. And I guess you just also alluded to the fact that there was a little bit more money baked in on the high side for a dealership in years past. Yep. Not so much the case, which I would guess makes your job a bit more, I don't know, I would think more difficult, but is it harder or easier as the years um, have progressed? It is probably harder. The, the, the people part of it's harder. The manufacturers are harder. They demand a lot more now. We have something called Pinnacle now, is, which is the way we're paid, which, you know, back in the old days we called it holdback. Now you have to jump through some hoops and, you know, have a nice building and have a nice facility and, and make sure your customer satisfaction index is high. And there's a lot more that goes into hitting the numbers now. You can make a little more money now compared to 20 years ago. You just have to do A through Z really, really, really well, which I tend to believe we do here. Well, the good news is you've got a great brand, a brand yep. that brings with it cachet, a mm -hmm. brand that just reeks of class. And how do you use that to your advantage? Because when somebody thinks of Cadillac, they think top of the line GM. No question about it. So uh, Cadillac is definitely a premium brand. It's up there with Mercedes, Range Rover, Audi, and BMW. And the manufacturer has made it into a premium brand over the years. The cars are probably, <clears throat> excuse me, the best they've ever been. You know, as far as quality and how they're built and finishes and, you know, it's, it's, it's a premium brand. And we exude that here from service to sales to parts, um, take care of our customers. Okay, so I just passed the 50-year-old mark, that benchmark. Well, and yeah. as I did so, I was like, listen, I need to look at the way I view a car a bit differently. Mm -hmm. And as a, a layman who's never tried to sell a car in my life, I'm going to tell you how I try to sell a car to anybody who's thinking about what's important to them. Okay. I, I ran these numbers, which All I right. want you to understand. I'm, so, I'm very interested. So I got uh, a Cadillac XT6 from you back in May. Yep. Since May, I've driven 17,310 miles. Which is a lot. Is it? Okay. Yeah, it's know. a lot. It's I mean, definitely a lot. When you think about people who commute, they're in their car a lot. Yep. But that's my number. Okay. All right, so run these numbers with me. So say you're averaging 30 miles an hour uh -huh. right, of those 17,000. So I've yep. had... 577 hours in your car in the car yeah keep let's be conservative and round that down to 500 500 24 hours in a day that means i have spent since may 20 full days in your vehicle in that vehicle 304 days since may i've been in the car seven percent of your of my life 
since May. So, so you, my point being, yeah. that's a lot. Well, you right? got that, that. I'm a math guy. I like the numbers. So I like if the numbers. you're going to spend seven percent of your life yep. in a space, I've gotten to the point that I want that space to be comfortable. Right? I've gotten to the point that I'm willing to put a few extra dollars into that investment because I am spending so much time there. Yep. So if you guys and girls aren't selling the car that way, perhaps they should. But I will say this as a testimonial to you and your team and the service and everything else. It has been a great experience because I do know that that time I spend in the car is going to be nice. Right. It's yep. going to be comfortable. It, it's good. You're going to ride a little bit different. Oh, yeah. I've rented cars since. I'm like, yep. oh, oh, this ain't a caddy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Cadillacs are definitely comfortable, Tom, to say the least. Uh, yeah. No, that's you know. been great. So what is the key? Se- if you're not selling a car that way, what is the key selling point to getting somebody to understand the quality of what they're getting? So if we have someone shopping for a car like you were back then, we will try to dial in what your expectations are of the car. You know, so a lot of people don't realize if you buy, let's just use GM as an example. So your car, we could compare it to a Trailblazer. We could compare it to an Arcadia. Um, what makes it? better or more comfortable in my eyes is usually service which is a weird way to look at it but you know you might spend an extra ten thousand dollars on a cadillac xt6 versus a chevy trailblazer and i'm not saying that chevy can't service the customers because they can they do a good job but here you're spending that extra ten thousand bucks a it's a nicer car it has a better suspension it has nicer leather it has certain features that are nicer than the trailblazer but at the end of the day I, in general, if I'm sitting with somebody, will explain to them that that extra 10000 bucks is going to come down to service. Um, the way you walk in the door, the way you're, you, know, you arrive at service. Like Everyone knows who you are because you've been in the area and you're kind of a figure and you're on TV. But that being said, I just feel we treat people better. We, we expect that extra 10000 bucks for Tom Lydon to get, feel comfortable, spend the 7% on the car. Um, Come in for service. Get a loaner car. Get his car cleaned. Pick his car up at his house. We try to do a lot of things that equate to why would Tom spend an extra ten thousand dollars on a car? Obviously, the car is the car. Is it nicer? Yeah, a Cadillac is nicer than a Chevy, but the, the extra ten thousand dollars has to come down to more than just how comfortable Tom is, in my eyes, which we we try to do here, you know, and that's really how I would sell it more of an experience. You know, if you're looking at a Cadillac Escalade, you know, they're $20,000 more than a Tahoe. What is Tom going to get for his $20,000? Yeah, he's going to get better leather, better suspension, a better riding vehicle, but I truly believe that he's going to get better service at Cadillac or Norwood versus a Chevy store in the area. And that's, you know, how I would sell it. So how do you zero in on expansion? How do you draw more people in as potential customers? The product kind of sells itself. If someone's shopping for a Cadillac, they're coming here. You know, we're a large dealer on the auto mile. They're going to come here at some point, whether it's through the internet, the telephone, or actually in the showroom. Expansion nowadays is kind of hard. You know, we were talking 20 years ago when we had 300 new cars out back. You know, as of this morning, I think I have 20. So customers aren't the problem right now it's more getting the product for the customers but doesn't that also go back to what you were talking about before when it comes to there isn't as much negotiation because when you have 300 cars out there there's not as much supply it it was definitely uh those 20 years ago which i tended to enjoy a little bit more um because there was a lot more customers and a lot more expansion our units and operation have gone down considerably over the last few years we are making you know, as you just said, no negotiation. So, you know, back then we would give someone twenty thousand dollars off an Escalade, and mm-hmm. they'd look at me and say, "How come it can't be twenty-one? And now everyone's paying sticker, and they're happy. It's a weird atmosphere for me personally. I would much rather go back to twenty years ago and have a thousand customers per year on the new Cadillac side versus the three hundred. Sounds kind of crazy, but that's who I am. I like the people. I want my service department to be busy. We might make less money selling the 1,000 versus the 300, which sounds crazy from a car dealer, but you have more people, which I, I like it personally. What about the advent and advancement of electric vehicles? How has that changed your business model? So Cadillac, um, that's a good question, Tom. Cadillac is a little late to the party with the electric, which is I think is a good thing. A lot of the other manufacturers are starting to back off of electric. I don't know how we're going to do with it. It, it's been tough. 
Um, the car is beautiful. It's priced right. It's called the Lyric. It starts at about $59,000. Good bang for the buck. I don't think the population has completely grasped the electric. I think we're going there eventually. But right now, it's a, it's a tough sell for someone like you who's spending 7% of their time in their car. Is Tom going to be able to electrify that car mm -hmm. all the time? And that's where we run into a problem with the electric car. Not because of the looks of it, not because of the way it drives, the aesthetics of it. it it's beautiful, but it comes down to can that person electrify that car on a given day to, you know, you're performing in your car. You're driving your car 7% of your life. Can I keep that car charged for Tom Lydon? Mm -hmm. And the answer right now is, to me, is not really. You know, Tom has to be diligent about charging that car. Every night he brings it home. If he parks somewhere like my store today, he can plug in here. We have it out front. We have three of them. But can he keep that car electrified constantly? And I don't know if we're there yet. Um, I don't know if anybody's really there yet. Some people are totally into it. They're far and few between. I think uh, the last article I read is about 5% of the cars in Massachusetts were electric, sold last month. So it's a small amount. I just don't think the infrastructure is there completely to, to get us there just yet. But at the end of the day, the manufacturers are pushing it. We're doing our best to sell them, and they are nice. But it's new. It's change. Let's leave with this. What's the biggest request you get from either existing customers or potential customers when they walk in the door? As far from sales, service, just Let's in say general, sales. You know, we're in New England. Four-wheel drive is important. This store particularly does really well with Escalates. It's probably the number one car selling for Cadillac, and that's probably our biggest request is Escalate. Your car is probably second, your XT6 and an yep. XT5. People are into SUVs in New England at the end of the day. I can um, tell you this. My 16-year-old daughter sees – every time we drive, I'm not even looking, and she'll see a car coming the other way, which is an Escalade. She's like, oh, that's my dream car. I'm so, like, keep working, baby. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so it's funny. The younger generation with that car, it's kind of grown iconic you know, through music, and they've done a great job promoting it with the younger generation. It's all that I drive. It's always what I find myself in. It's comfortable. It does everything. I don't spend as much time as you do in a car, but – it, it gives me comfort. I can fit six people. I feel safe in the car. And that's probably our biggest request is, is Escalade. And currently, we have none on the ground. Oh, come none. on. None. Zero, Tom. Zero. We have a bunch of used ones. But on the new side, we don't have any. And why um, is that? Um, because the manufacturer has shifted so rapidly into the electric, they've shut down most manufacturing on what we call an ICE vehicle, which is internal combustion engine, to electric. So... 50% of the cars being built right now by Cadillac are electric. With 5% of them in Massachusetts being purchased exactly. electric. Exactly. So uh, we can do some math on that one. Okay. But, um, <laughs> it, it, it's tough. That's where things have changed and things are tough because of the push for electric. And next year, they, the Cadillac will be, there will be a Cadillac IQ, which is 100% electric. It's going to be a big Escalade, and it's 100% electric, and... You'd be surprised how many phone calls we get. They released the car about six months ago on the on the internet, and people are you know want to know when the Cadillac Escalade IQ is going to be here. All right. Yeah. There you go. So some excitement yeah. perhaps in the future. Yeah. Well, well, listen, I, I just love picking people's brains and learning about industries I don't know too much about. And when mm -hmm. you're sitting across the desk from somebody who's done it for 25 years, obviously you're going to learn some stuff. So I appreciate the time. My pleasure. Appreciate the support of Westwood Living. Yeah. We had an unbelievable time here in November. Great event. Great event. I mean, really yeah. cool. Very impressed what you did. To see people in the studio yeah, yeah. and just surrounded by the cars yeah. and uh, having a good time. So I appreciate you opening up the dealership to us to be able to do that and hope to be able to do that again sometime Absolutely. in the future. Absolutely. That is Mike Exeda. He is the dealer principal here at yes, Cadillac sir. of Norwood. And I appreciate your time. Thank you, Tom. That is the very latest from the Westwood Living Podcast Network. As always, if you could think of somebody you'd like for me to have a conversation with, just reach out, send an email. T. Leiden at bestversionmedia.com is the email address. We'll find that person, sit down, have a conversation, and share it with you right here on the Westwood Living Podcast Network. But for now, from the dealership, Cadillac of Norwood, this is Tom Leiden saying farewell and thanks for listening. Thank you.